All right, everybody. We are back out on the ICF job. Hey, Crafts. Saw where we uh, quoted it and reviewed it. We got the ICF basement poured. Looking good. Subfloor's in. Now we are here to put on the second level, which will be another six courses of the Nudera block. It's a little crappy today. Weather, I don't know if it's going to hold out. I don't know if it's going to rain us out. But you can see, got trusses here. We got to get this stacked out and get the pour completed so that the customer can put those trusses on that house. Let's get started for the day. everybody I wanted to show you something here real quick we're gonna do like we normally do you've seen before and we're gonna start on the outside corners so there are four of them here on this job we're gonna work our way to the middle we do have a couple of commons one on this wall one on that wall and I believe the back wall and the front wall which this is the walk outside of the basement you can see it there I believe these are going to stack out and end up being a factory and we won't have a common however regardless of that we got to start on the corners and this is actually something that i'm going to have to do for every block so we trial this down with a block not an actual trial and we get it set lower than the top surface of the block here what that allows for is little to no interference when we're stacking the next course yes we will have some resistance because of this board this floor truss if you will however we want to make sure that these lock mechanisms right here you can see there's lock mechanisms on both sides we want to make sure that that block is fully seated into the dimples and these nipples is what Mike and I like to call them are fully seated in the bottom of the next course that goes on well, right here you can see we've got some concrete in here so I've got to make sure that all of this is out it's okay if we chunk the foam out a little bit but you see how that came out of there that would have kept our block raised up and it wouldn't allowed this lock mechanism to lock properly so we got to dig all this out and there isn't a lot there's a few spots where the uh, concrete pump truck got a little crazy um, we do tape this if you watch dp's channel there is a layer of tape that goes on top of this <clears throat> prior to pouring these basement walls here um, but all of this down this edge right here this is all going to have to come off and then I'll be able to start stacking this corner. So that one's pretty tough. And basically how we take that off of there, normally we would have a hammer. I forgot a hammer today, but we have the good old <coughs> Fisker X27 splitting maw. So we're going to use the flat side of it, not the sharp side of it. Sharp, 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 sharp. How about I talk a little bit better today? Not the sharp side of it. And we're going to take and we're going to notch all this down. You can see it doesn't take much because it's a thin layer of concrete that's there. You see how I kind of knocked a little bit of the block off? That's okay. It's not a problem. That lock mechanism is key. So where I get next to this lock mechanism here, if you look at this lock mechanism, you can see how deep that second lock is. It's pretty good ways down in there. Well, the concrete is up to it here. So I want to 
hit styrofoam right next to it bust that concrete up a little bit you see how it fall, fell out of there now my lock mechanism is going to work properly all right we're going to go down through here we're going to clean all that up just a few spots we've got one bad spot right down there you can kind of see it over the foam that one will take us a little while but the rest of this here <clears throat> shouldn't take that long we're going to stack it out guys I want to show you something here um, that back wall as you saw in the time-lapse stacked out with full eight footers on this front wall you can see them outside corners long short over here it's also long see the longs going down that way the longs coming down this way so typically these are alternated due to the step footer at the bottom <clears throat> frost proof footer if you look down through there you can see they are all alternated long short long short long short long short short at the top what we ended up with was two shorts so when we ran these eight footers down through here like you saw us do on the back side a full eight footer fit in there when we put a eight footer here which would have been the sixth block on this course we actually this cut piece here we actually ended up i put that right back where it was that makes a full block okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve studs is a full block well if you look there it ended up right on a seam splice seam not really a splice it's a seam well i don't want two seams on top of each other because it could create a weak spot in the wall so i cut two studs two studs off and i made sure this is a factory edge i made sure that we had two studs on the original block that has concrete in it so what we're going to do is we're going to span that seam with a four stud block it's still a factory and a factory so we're not creating a common we're just creating a short block to ensure we span this seam and once we get it spanned with this block here okay now I don't have it in there all the way yet 
not locked in place but just to kind of show you we're now spanning that seam right there with this two studs on each side which in turn whenever we go back with our second course what to pay attention but the hope is that our factory ends up right here in the center of this which then would align with that seam at the bottom so i think it's going to work out we just have to pay attention to which side we're running from to make sure that it ends up there just wanted to point that out make sure that uh every under everybody understood why i made that change let's do some more stacking all right everybody we got the first course of the second level on all the way around i was able to go through the print with the homeowner and we have got we'll start in this corner over here we've got all the doors this here the big x is a door because we'll actually cut all the way through that 18 inch block and we'll pop it off to that initial layer that had concrete in it we have a window here so we are going to get to stacking out this second level second layer to the second level let's get started <laughs> So we're back on the job today uh, you saw earlier that I was marking out the windows got a few of the window notches cut out you can see there we've got a third layer of block going up we've got some more windows and doors notched out we've got John and Robbie with us today What's up? we've what, what what I did today I'm with just about everything. what I did was uh, I came in and I marked out each of the windows inside and outside so that when we got here today we could i could run ahead of them on that third course i could run ahead of them and get all the cutouts in. you can see up there on the walk outside of the house there's several notches um, but what we're trying to do today is get all the layers as high as we can get what's going to end up being i believe is uh, two more layers so that would be one and then there'll be another one on top of that and then we got to put the braces up to put the um, last couple of layers on and uh, we've got those marked out the way we mark those out is these braces are three feet I'll show you here from here to here is three feet and that's the part that hinges out for the actual walk board so we start in a corner, we measure out three feet, and we put an X. And then after that X, we go every ninth stud, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, put another X, and that marks where that brace is gonna go. But one thing that I wanna point out to you guys, this is a door. The door always sets the height of what your windows are gonna be. You don't want your window shorter than your door. Then it looks funny so right here was 84 inches to the top of the door it's an 82 and a half inch ro and then we have our window bucks over there you can see that 2 by 12 on this side that's on top of the sideboards <clears throat> so you got an inch and a half to that so that gets us to 84 inches our window bucks are 63 inches tall so 84 minus 63 that's 21 inches so from the floor 
to the bottom of the window is 21 inches. And what that allows, we'll take that window buck, we'll set it in that hole. So that's a six footer. That's a six footer. When we set that in that hole and we make our door buck, which will go in here, that top of that door buck will match this window, that window, that window, that window, that window, that door, that window, that one, so on, so on, so on, all around the house. So <clears throat> we're gonna get to notching the rest of these windows out and doors. We've got one more door to notch out. Uh, but you'll be able to see this process as to how we notch these out. I'll give you a quick explanation. That bottom course already has rebar in it. So when I come in here and I cut a door, I've got to cut that rebar out. This is our vertical pin, the tire two walls together. That ended up in the threshold of the door, so we'll cut that off. Where we cut a window and we are 21 inches up off the floor, you can see that rebar stays in there and runs all the way through. We don't have to notch it out there. But the basics of this is you want to try, yes, that's not a very good cut. You want to try to cut as straight as you can. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a rough opening. Once you put the window buck in there, you'll square it, plumb it, level it, and strap it off. But here's the basic process. Get a sawzall. This blade's a little too long, but that's the blade we have in the truck today that's new. Cut your verticals first. That's a vertical. This is a vertical. And then you come in here with your sawzall, and you start on the horizontal line. This is a little hard to do one-handed, but we'll figure it out. Get your penetration, and then you're gonna cut each stud. So yeah, I got off the line there a little bit. And you'll notice that I made it part of the way through that stud and then it got difficult. The reason for that is, I'll show you over here, you can see the blocks ship flat. When we stack them on the wall, they're expanded, right? Well, what allows that, is you can see that little metal pin right there. So at first I'm cutting through plastic, then I'm cutting through metal. That's what slows it down. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna cut the rest of these. And then we're gonna get these two layers stacked. We're gonna get some braces on today. We're gonna have some fun. Stay tuned for more. show you guys here <clears throat> I explained the uh, door cut out up there versus a window so this is a door so it gets cut all the way to the basement block that is allows us to stack this first row on if you look down in here it's a piece of rebar that spans all the way across there and it is 20 feet total length so what we do is normally we already have the grinder staged next to us but i forgot it i left it over here i'm starting to act like mike so you know acting like mike yeah quit that crap anyway <clears throat> we'll take a grinder better part grinder and you want to try to make sure that you have some clearance behind your cut there you can see the cut and you can kind of see how that aligns with the rebar there so you want a little bit of room behind it so that you can plumb square and level your door so we'll take the grinder and we'll cut it about right there and then we'll make a second cut over here and since we have that <clears throat> strap right there right against the cut we want that rebar to stay in that strap because that strength so we're going to cut this one right against the strapping over here it doesn't matter because the strapping is pretty good ways back from where we're going to make the cut on the rebar so we'll cut it past the strap out in here just want to explain that to you guys. We're going to get this cut. Keep the process going.
All right, everybody. We are well on our way to getting close to being able to put the braces up. What we've got so far is two more levels. You can see over here, we're working on what is considered the fourth row. First row, as I explained earlier, being this one. Second, third. We've got all of our rebar in all the way around. We've got the entire thing up to three rows. And now we're starting on the fourth. Here's where, if you're man behind the scenes, it's a little bit of struggle to get the fourth because I'm 6'1". Not to be bluntly honest, I'm six foot and a half inch. However, you can see where this block is. And when you're man behind the scenes, anyway, I, man behind the scenes is short. We all know this. It's a little bit harder to reach this outside where there isn't a window cut out because you're here and you're happening to hit that block. And you can see my elbow is right on top of the wall. So we're going to try to get this fourth course on without braces and without ladders. After we get that fourth course on, we have two more courses to go. And prior to doing those last two courses, we will have to put the braces on. We have those marked out here. Um, we started in that corner. You start three feet out and then you go every ninth brace. I think I explained that earlier as well. You can see the X on the wall that represents that. So John and I, it's down to just John and I, we're going to do our best to get this fourth course on. Rebar cut, window notches proper, with as little waste as possible. Let's get going. All right, everybody, you can see behind me there that we've got almost the fourth course on. The remaining of this job will most likely be on Dirt Perfect's channel. So, as always, like, comment, subscribe.